David, midway through NBAA 2023, we're looking around at what's new, what's interesting, and then there is the unique. Tell us what's happening with the WISP program. So we're really excited to be here. We have brought our Gen 6 aircraft. This is the aircraft that we are going to be type certificating with the FAA. We're also going to be the 135 operator. And we're excited to be here. I mean, new and novel, we are all electric. We are sustainability, but most importantly, we are going straight to autonomy with human oversight. A lot of people think, why are you doing that? First and foremost is safety. You look at causal accidents of GA and commercial accidents, you have lost control by far and away the leading cause. So we're gonna eliminate that because this aircraft will not be able to lose control. Second, you have engine failures. We're gonna have 12 engines that any one of them can fail. It's also electric, so very few moving parts. Even software. Software are gonna have multiple redundancies in the software because we're gonna have systems on the ground that are controlling the aircraft. So we're gonna have that communications and that control link that's connecting the aircraft to the ground. But at the end of the day, that flight procedure is gonna be pre-programmed so even if you lose that C2 link, the aircraft will complete the flight just as intended, just not, not like current today's flights when you lose communications. Third and foremost, you have controlled flight into terrain. That operation, very defined operation, we're going to know exactly what's in between that. And it'll be only a 25 minute flight. So we're going to have a, the potential to eliminate the leading three causes of fatal accidents in GA and commercial. What is a reasonable evolutionary path for the next few years for WISC? So we don't put out a date because one, um, my date is dictated by the FAA. I have a lot of things to get through as far as certification of the aircraft, certification of the 135, but by removing that pilot, I have some things that are in the current regulatory framework that I need exemptions from, maybe a, a new SFAR, who knows. Because of that, I like to say, we like to be operational before the end of the decade. And that's really key. So, so what does our crawl look like? We are fully supportive of the early entrants, the Jobies, and et cetera. They're going to be doing the piloted operations. We want them to succeed. We want to be a close second. And so us operational shortly thereafter, I think we can enter a market. We're going to be entering it under IFR operations. Again, very defined operation with that instrument flight procedure. But by the time we enter the market, we're going to be able to scale, I think, a little bit quicker because of the integration with the whole ecosystem. So we're looking at a few key markets, a few key cities that really establishes that whole ecosystem and approach so that we can provide value to that community and, and replicate that partnering with the FAA and their Innovate 28. So how do we replicate that throughout the country? How does this vehicle scale up for the future? This is what we're focused on right now, but I think once we're up and running and prove it, obviously as a fully owned Boeing company, I think there's gonna be applications. And that's exciting. I mean, how can we how can we replace regional air mobility? How can we have that replacing some of the essential air service? A lot of these communities are losing airports, or losing access. And so how can this new segment of aviation kind of fill that gap, fill that need? And then connecting today's resources of airports. We have 5,000 plus airports throughout the country which are vastly underutilized. So something like this can really tie those communities, make those innovation hubs, economic hubs, and then tie them into the larger communities. Well, it's going to be an interesting future. We're uh, obviously as a news organization, we're just having a ball reporting on this and that and seeing who's doing what and what's being announced next. Please keep us up to date. 100%. It's a ball for us too. From a, from a policy perspective, this is new, it's novel, it's something my kids are going to be excited about and I'm excited to help introduce it to the world. The future of USB charging power has arrived. Introducing new, ultra-fast charging TA360 USB chargers. Unlock the power of USB power delivery PD technology. Max power. multiple configurations, in-seat, cabin, cockpit, and galley USB power, and a direct upgrade for all True Blue Power USB chargers, compatible with any USB electronic device. Easy to install, backed by the best. True Blue Power, the USB experts.